Hey, good morning, everyone. It is so good to be with you. This is so cool that we have the resources, we have the tools, that even when we're not together in person, we get to be with each other on Facebook Live. We're so glad that you joined us this morning. Um, we want to we wanna tell you about a couple things. One is that we will be back together in person um, at 10, 1030 a.m. next Sunday, so January 6th. 10.30 a.m., come join us. Another thing is, is that any time during this service, you, we would love for you to connect with us, and you can do that by texting One Life, all one word, to 41411. It's on the screen behind me. One Life to 41411. You can tell us about um, prayer requests. You can tell us how you want to get involved in the church. You can tell us if you would like to find a life group. You can partner with our church financially by doing that. So make sure that you take some time today and, and text that in and uh, get connected with our church, all right? Um, I want to give you two minutes, all right? We're going to give you two minutes to talk about two things. One, what is the favorite thing, your favorite thing that you received for Christmas this year, all right? So your favorite thing. And then what was the funniest thing that you received for Christmas? I remember as a teenager, I had a cousin, and she would get my brother and I the same thing. It was a bag of white tube socks. And, uh, and so every time we would get it, we would open it up, and it was such a generous act on her behalf to give us that gift, but every time we would open it up and we would just we would just laugh. It just gave us a good laugh, and so it was memorable, and it's just a good, good memory. So we want you to share that. What was your favorite thing that you received this Christmas, and what was uh, the funniest thing? We're going to give you two minutes to talk about that, and then right after that, we're going to show a video that is going to lead us into a time of worship. Once again, thank you so much for being here, and we hope that you enjoy today's service. Maybe you were born of the worst circumstances. But on the other side of the tracks, maybe all the statistics and facts were stacked up against you. Maybe you were out of line or running out of time, waiting for the stars to align, looking for a sign or about to lose your mind. Maybe you were wondering if you could save yourself or if you were in need of a lifeline. Whether we bow at the altars of self or ascribe to the divine, there's a certain kind of hope our souls long to find, a certain type of void only God can satisfy pieces of our shattered dreams. No matter how many wrong directions, U-turns, or detours, even our worst moments can be redeemed. Because there is a God who wants to take the chains that bind us and set us free until we learn our true identity, until we learn to see the world through the eyes of possibility. God writes the greatest plot twists. He's been carefully pinning your story, taking all your mishaps to the places that you've been misshapen. When you thought nothing beautiful could be made of you, he was painting your canvas, make no mistake. 
God makes no mistakes. He loves, he saves, he waits, which is why as long as you have breath, it's never too late to trade guilt and stress and shame and grace. The very God who formed you, he wants to be with you, wants to show you a peace that surpasses, love everlasting, that no mistake is too big, no request too small, that every heart, life, story, God sees and knows them all, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you've done, or where you've been, but God changes everything.
Like a ring of solid gold Like a vow that is tested Like a covenant of old Your love is enduring Through the winter rain And beyond the horizon Mercy for today Faithful you have been Faithful you will be You pledge yourself to me And that's why I sing your praise Will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips Your praise will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips Your praise will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my makes us so and you show the weakness strength becomes our own you're making me like you clothing me in white bringing beauty from ashes for you will have your bride free of all her gifts and rid of all her shame continue in our worship this morning um, by reading the scripture over us. I'm going to read it twice here, so let me, let me read it the first time through, and you guys just soak it in. All honor to God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
for it is his boundless mercy that has given us the privilege of being born again so that we are now members of God's own family. Now we live in the hope of eternal life because Christ rose again from the dead. And God has reserved for his children the priceless gift of eternal life. It is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And God in his mighty power will make sure that you get there safely to receive it because you are trusting him. Now I'm going to read it one more time like I said, but this time I want, as I read through for you, to pick out a word or phrase that stands out to you. And I want you to share that with the person that you're next to or your family if you're with them. And if you're, uh, if you're not, then I'd love for you to um, comment on the Facebook thread and maybe a bunch of us will be able to hear the good news that you're hearing this morning. So here we go from the top, First Peter. All honor to God, the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for it is his boundless mercy that has given us the privilege of being born again so that we are now members of God's own family. Now we live in the hope of eternal life because Christ rose again from the dead. And God has reserved for his children the priceless gift of eternal life. It is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And God, in his mighty power, will make sure that you get there safely to receive it because you are trusting him. Mm. I'm just going to give you a couple minutes there. share a brand new song this morning called Living Hope. Yeah. 
that sealed the promise your very body began to breathe out of the silence a roaring lion declare the grave so no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your very body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me jesus your thank you this morning that you are a hope that goes beyond our flesh and blood that lasts through every age through every season through every up and down thank you for being here with us this morning in jesus name i pray amen This year, I want to spend more time with my kids. I want to stop gossiping. Did you see what she was wearing? I know. This year, I'm going to join the Rikers game. This year, I'm going to control my shopping. I'm going to stop spending $6 on a cup of coffee. I'm going to control my anger. What are you doing? Can't you see I try to work here? I want to find that special girl. How are you doing? Huh. Pick it up. This year, I'm going to call my parents more. This year, I want to get rid of this pot belly. I want to care more about the environment. I want to be a better handyman. This year, I'm going to be my own boss. I'm going to tithe 10% of my gross pay. This year, I will pay off all my debts. I'm going to go back to school and get my master's. I want to complete a marathon. I want to quit smoking. <coughs> this year, I'll control my road rage. I want to have a daily quiet time. Okay, maybe a monthly quiet time. Hey, good morning. It is so good to be with you. And uh, I hope that you are having a great Christmas and um, you're looking forward to the new year. This morning, we're going to jump in to a text in Mark chapter 10. So the Gospel of Mark chapter 10. So go ahead and pull out your phone, pull out your Bible, and, uh, and go to Mark chapter 10. And we're going to start in verse 46. So go ahead and do that. We're going to be using the New Living Translation. If you have your phone, I would encourage you to download the Bible app. Um, it's a great resource, great tool, and you can change between translations. So go ahead, go to Mark chapter 10, verse 46, and we'll dive in, okay? Here we go. It says this, Then they reached Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed him. And there was a blind beggar whose name was Bartimaeus, and he was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. And all the people around Bartimaeus said, Be quiet, 
be quiet. But he only shouted louder. I love that. I love it. He, he, was, he, he, he was desperate. He wanted to get Jesus' attention. So he said, son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and he said, tell him to come here. Let's just stop there for just a second. I want to point something out. Jesus hears you. When Jesus heard him, Jesus hears your prayers. Jesus hears your pain. Jesus hears when you are rejoicing, when you are celebrating. Jesus hears you. There's another time whenever Jesus heals a blind man in the Gospel of John, and it says that when Jesus saw him. So Jesus hears us, and Jesus sees us. We just need to remember that this morning. We need to remember that because we can, be, we, we can believe the lie that God has stopped listening, that God has turned his ear from us, that God has turned his eyes from us, but he hasn't. He hears us and he sees us. So let's go back. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and he said to him, tell him to come, to come here. So they called the blind man, said, cheer up, they said, come on, he's calling you. Bartimaeus, he threw aside his coat, jumped up. And he came to Jesus. Jesus said to Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said, my rabbi, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go, for your faith has healed you. Instantly the man could see, and he followed Jesus down the road. I, I want to work our way through the story. There's so much going on, and I want to try to touch on as much as we can. But my first question for you this morning is, how's your sight? How's your sight? Uh, when, when's the last time you went to the eye doctor? Um, well, how, how far down, you know, that chart that's on the wall, how far down did you get? Maybe you could talk about it um, in your living room. Maybe you have some bragging rights that you could, you could read the very bottom line. I remember back in fourth or fifth grade whenever we realized that, that things were a little blurry for me. And my mom, she took me to the eye doctor and they put me on that machine and they put me behind it and they asked me to start reading the letters. And I remember whenever they put that first pair of glasses on my face and everything became clear. And I had these moments where I would sit in class and I would take my glasses and I would pull them down on my nose and things would get blurry and, and things would hurt my head and hurt my eyes. And then I'd put my glasses back on and I could see clearly again. I, I, I remember thinking, I, I, that was normal, but this is actually normal. Like, I was once blind. I mean, not literally blind, but I was once blind, but now I can see. One of my favorite hymns of all time, one of the first songs that I ever taught my kids was Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm fine, found. And then there it is. I was blind, but now I see. I once was blind, but now I can see. For those of us who have surrendered our lives to Jesus Christ, that is our mantra. For those of us who have given our lives to Jesus, that is, our, that is the, the sermon that we pr preach on a daily basis. For those of us who have been baptized into the waters, into uniting ourselves with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, those words are the words that are on repeat. I once was blind, but now I can see. That's our good news. That is the good news of Jesus, that he redeemed us, that he saved us, he delivered us from our spiritual blindness, and he gave us new eyes to see. But here's the reality. So many people in our world are still walking around blind. They are still Bartimaeus. The world is blind. The world is populated by sightless people. I mean, how else are we to explain the, the hurt and the pain that we see in our world on a daily basis? How else are we supposed to explain the constant threat of war, the, the severe hunger that so many people in our world experience, or, or the war that is against unborn children in our nation, or the raising rates of, of anxiety and depression, 
the growth of drug addiction and alcohol abuse, the fact that we are still killing one another with weapons, with guns, that we are still cutting one another's legs out from underneath each other. How do we explain so much evil and so much hurt? How do we explain so much brokenness? How do we explain all of this pain that we are experiencing and that we are causing one another? It's because that billions of people in our world still cannot see. That there's a spiritual blindness There's a spiritual blindness. The devil, Satan, the serpent, the devil, the devil has blinded, blinded their minds and their hearts. The hearts and the minds of those who do not believe in Jesus. There is an ongoing war. There is a battle going on for our hearts, for our minds. There is an ongoing battle and war going on for our eyes, for our sight. If you go back to the very beginning in in the Garden of Eden, the temptation of Eve, of Adam and Eve, was exactly this. The serpent slithered to Eve's feet. And, And the temptation was, Eve, take your eyes off of all of the good things that God has has given you. Take your eyes off of God Himself and look at the apple. That was the temptation. Look at the apple. Look at the apple and stop looking at the goodness and the beauty of God. There's an ongoing war for our eyes, for our sight. The devil, Satan, wants us to continue walking around in our blindness, in our spiritual darkness. Jesus shows up for Bartimaeus and for you and I and for the world around us to give us new eyes. Jesus wants to give us a heavenly vision, a heavenly vision to see the world the way that he sees the world, to see ourselves the way that he sees us. Jesus is inviting us to walk in light. He wants to heal us so that we might walk in light. So Jesus looks at Bartimaeus And says, Bartimaeus, what is it that you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Now, I would encourage you, if it's on your, if you you use the Bible on your phone, to highlight every question that Jesus asks. Read through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And every time that Jesus asks a question, highlight it. If you're reading in your Bible, underline it, highlight it, circle it. These questions they, they are so powerful, and there's, there's very few that are more powerful than this. What is it that you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus knew exactly what he wanted Jesus to do for him. And so Bartimaeus' response was, I want to see. You know, I'm sure we just came off of Christmas, and I'm sure some of you who have kids, you ask your kids, what is it that you want for Christmas? And some of you, your, their, your kids, they were like, well, I don't, I don't know, maybe this or this. Or maybe you ask your spouse. That's probably a better example. You ask your spouse, honey, what is it that you want for Christmas? They're like, oh, I don't know, you know, like maybe this sweater or maybe, maybe this new thing or this thing. Or what. And, and maybe you ask your husband, like, what do you want? Oh, maybe I'll take some jeans. No, no, no. With Bartimaeus, he knew exactly what he wanted. It's like when I ask my kids, like, every year, what is it that you want? There are certain things that keep making the list. He knew. He knew. It was clear. I want to see. I want to see. How would you answer that question this morning? What is it that you want me to do for you? If Jesus were to sit down in front of you right now, sit beside you on the couch, what is it that you want me to do for you? I hope that our response this morning is the same as Bartimaeus. Jesus, I want to see. I want to see. I want to see what you see. I want to see what you want me to see. Let 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 me share with this. Do you see what Jesus wants you to see? What does Jesus want you to see? Here's three things he wants you to see. The first is he wants you to see his relentless love for you. Just let that settle in for a second. What does Jesus want you to see? 
He wants you to see his relentless love for you. He is head over heels for you. He is crazy about you. He left heaven. He walked away from his throne, took on flesh, and entered into a sin, sin-diseased world. He took on flesh because he loves you. Not because he's obligated. Not because his Father in heaven said you have to. Not because it was on his to-do list. Not because it was on his calendar. But because he loves you. And he will stop at nothing. He will not stop short of you knowing that he loves you. Do you see? Do you see? Do you see his relentless love for you? Do you see your new identity in Christ? Because of Christ's love for you, because of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, do you see that you have been given a new identity A new identity as sons and daughters, as children of God, of co-heirs, adopted ones, people who can sit at the table of God. Do you see your new identity? We're reminded of this whenever Jesus is baptized early on in the gospel accounts. He's baptized, and when he comes up out of the waters, the heavens split open. The heavens split open, and the Father says, that is my Son. I love him and I am pleased with him. The Father speaks identity over Jesus. If you, if you have been baptized into the waters, if you have, been, you have united your life with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, then you can be assured that the heavens split open and God the Father spoke over you and said, You are my beloved. I love you. You are my child and I am pleased with you. Do you see? Do you see your new identity? And finally, do you see the unseen people all around you? There are people that God has planted in your life. They are there on purpose. They work in the cubicle next to you. They work in the classroom next to you. They live in the house next to you. They they go to the gym and run on the treadmill next to you. And they feel unseen, they feel unheard, they feel unloved, they feel overlooked, they feel unimportant. And they have never known, or maybe they did at one point, but they have forgotten the relentless love that Christ has for them. And God has purposely placed them in your path, beside you, so that you would would unashamedly Proclaim the good news, the relentless love of Christ to them. Can you see them? Can you see them? Do you see them as an annoyance? Do you see them as just a problem to be dealt with? Do you see them just as someone that you need to wave at as you pull into your garage? Or do you see them the way that Christ sees them, the way that Jesus sees them? How do you see them? Do you see them? Do you see them? One Life Church, my friends, as we are closing out 2018 and we are moving into a new year, into 2019, my prayer is that we will see Jesus. And as we see Jesus, we will see the world the way that he sees it. We will see the things and the people that he wants us to see. I believe that if Jesus and I were sitting down over a cup of coffee right now, and he leaned in and said, Justin, what is it that you want me to do for you? My response would be, I want to see what you see. I want to see what you see. I I want to see your your, your relentless love for me. I want to see your love for me. I want to see my new identity as the God's beloved son. And I want to see the unseen people all around me. And I want to be unashamed to share the good news with those who are still blind. That's what I want Jesus to do for me. That's what I want Jesus to do for you this year. 
That's what I want Jesus to do for us. Now, there's an interesting detail in the story of Bartimaeus. There's an interesting story. When Jesus says, bring Bartimaeus to me, and the crowd goes over and says, hey, cheer up. He wants to see you. There's an interesting detail. It says that Bartimaeus threw aside his coat. He got up and he ran to Jesus. He threw aside his coat. That is an important detail. It's important because for Bartimaeus as a blind man, he really had no value or worth in his neighborhood, in his society. And so he only had a limited amount of possessions And his coat was one of those possessions. It was very dear to him. It kept him warm. It it maybe was a a security blanket for him. It was his. There There weren't very many things in his life that he could say, this is mine. But his coat was one of those. And Bartimaeus, whenever he was faced with Jesus, when Jesus invited him to be healed, Bartimaeus threw aside everything that he knew and everything that he had in order to be in the presence of the healing presence of Jesus. There was nothing that was going to stand in Bartimaeus' way from coming, coming to the feet of Jesus and experiencing healing. My question this morning for us is, will we throw aside our coat? Will we throw aside our coat? What in your life is standing in the way of seeing Jesus? What in your life, what is standing in the way of you seeing Jesus today? You know, I I tell my kids all the time, it was passed on to me from my my parents. Um, My kids will get in front of the TV, and, and I tell them all the time, you've probably heard this, you make a better door than a window, right? They stand in my way. If, I, if I'm watching a basketball game, watching a football game, and, uh, and I, I'm, they, they get in the way in the most important moments, right? It's just how it works. They get, they get in the way of the TV. I'm like, you make a better door than a window. They stand in my way from seeing something that is important to me. A few years ago, I was playing Madden on uh, Xbox with some friends. And we were playing together, and it was an important moment. I was losing, and I, they kicked the ball off to me. It was last, the last few seconds. My guy starts running down the field, and a friend of ours walked in front of the TV right at the moment that they were going to tackle my guy, and they couldn't see the TV, and I went blasting by them, scored a touchdown, and won the game. There was something standing in their way. What's standing in your way today? What's standing in your way from you seeing Jesus? What's standing in your way from you seeing what Jesus wants you to see? What's standing in your way from you seeing the way that Jesus sees? What in your life is standing in the way? I want to offer you a prayer to pray. It's a very simple prayer. Very simple prayer that I, I believe will put us in the posture so that Jesus can give us new eyes. Here it is. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I want you. Jesus, I am yours. Maybe you're like me and and prayer can be kind of difficult. You don't know what words to pray. You don't know what to say. You don't know if you're saying the right words. I just try to make it as simple as possible. If I were Bartimaeus, today, I would look at Jesus and say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I want you. Jesus, I am yours. I can't do this alone. Jesus, I cannot do this on my own. I need you. Jesus, I want you to be the thing that I want more than anything else in the world. I don't want anything else to stand in my way from seeing you and from knowing you. I want you. And Jesus, I belong to no one else. My allegiance belongs to no one else. I am not giving myself to anyone else. You, I, I am yours 
I am not worshiping any other gods. I'm not worshiping any other idols. I'm not turning my eyes to an apple whenever, God, you are standing right beside me. I am yours. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I want you. Jesus, I am yours. At this time, we want to give you a few minutes to have a conversation with your friends, with your family that you're watching with. They're going to be on the screen. Here they are, three questions. How have you experienced Jesus' relentless love for you? Just give an example, a time in your life whenever you knew that Jesus loved you. Tell a story. The second one, what word of identity most resonates with you? There's all different kinds of ways that God says, you are my blank. Some examples, you are my beloved, you are my children, you are chosen, you are adopted, you are co-heirs. So what word of identity, you can pick any, there's not a right or wrong answer, what word of identity most resonates with you? And then last, who are the unseen people in your life that need to hear the good news of Jesus? That God has planted in your life and he is calling you, he is sending you to take the good news the good news of Jesus to them. Who are the unseen people in your life that need to hear the good news of Jesus? We'll give you a few minutes. I'll come back and uh, wrap everything up. Enjoy your conversation. Hey, I hope that conversation was fantastic. And if you're still talking, great. You can continue that conversation. You can continue talking at lunch throughout the day and, uh, and even over the next few days as you get to hang out with family and friends. We want to just uh, remind you of a couple things. One is we will be back together um, at 1030 Central Drive on January the 6th. So next Sunday, 1030 a.m., we'll be back together. We hope that you'll join us. And then also, if you would like to partner with our church financially, you can do that by going to onelifechurch.tv or you can text One Life, so all one word, O N E L I F E, all right? Text One Life to 41411. So just take out your phone, go to your text messages, put in the number 41411 the word One Life, and, uh, and you'll receive a few links, one um, to tell us if you're new and you're just joining us for the first time, uh, if you want to get more involved, if you want to join a life group, and then also how to partner financially with our church. So we would love it if you would partner with us and you would become a part of this family, so make sure that you do that this morning. Our prayer for you is that you would have a very restful next few days, and we are praying for you, and we cannot wait to be back together next Sunday. Have a wonderful day, friends. Grace and peace. Mm